the, the AI thing just keeps guessing it correctly. You know, it's just like, oh my God, even if I'm drawing it poorly and they still come up with the answer, it's almost like it, it knows what I'm thinking. You know, I think that is the scary part for me. But I can't see how it could be fun. It could be cool, especially in this new age where technology is just booming. And uh, that's kind of what all kids know nowadays is technology and pretty, probably pretty soon AI. They won't, it, it's going to be amazing at how uh, prehistoric it's going to be for a kid to play with a game as just a flat out board or something that they could just simply draw, you know? It's always got to have some type of technology involved, but you know, that's just my opinion about it. Would you play it? Let me know. Uh, something else is terrifying right here. This is a hectic journey out of this world. Reaches its end, okay? Special moment when a NASA astronaut returned to Earth after breaking a big record at no fault to his own, though, okay? So Frank Rubio became the first American to spend more than a year in space, logging 371 days in total. Rubio initial, initially planned to spend six months in space, but his ride home fell through, forcing him to extend his stay at the International Space Station. Says a coolant leak extended his stay, leading him to a record 371 days. And after months, he would eventually find his way home by way of a Russian capsule that landed him in Kazakhstan. But this was Rubio's first journey to space after he was selected for the NASA's astronaut corps back in 2017. And I would not be surprised if it was his last, because ain't no way in the world, guys. Just the simple fact of getting off of this Earth freaks me out. But can you imagine only, you know, trying to stay there for, you know, half a year? Okay, cool. Got to do that. Six months. But for it to be extended to the point of, I don't understand, I, I, I probably would lose my mind uh, not knowing when I can return back home. So, yeah, it, more power to him for staying super positive. Uh, and I pray that he is re reimbursed for everything that he had to go through up there by himself, staying sane. Like I said, it's just a terrifying situation for me. Now, I got to get to this. Somebody once told me the world was gonna, you know, I'm going with this. Shrek, and I'm talking about an Airbnb in a Shrek fashion, okay? This is a cool deal just in time for Halloween. Company has recreated Shrek's swamp base on 2001 animated movie. The ogre fans will find the place very earthy. Shrek's swamp is located in the Scottish Highlands. It features a mud-laden in moss-covered, murky-watered abode. Guests can light earwax candles, sit around a fire, and enjoy donkeys' freshly made waffles for breakfast. Interested guests can request a two-night stay starting October 13. Again, this is something that I actually would probably try out. I think it's super-duper cool. Uh, I, I love Shrek when it first came out, and obviously, hey, now, you're a rock star. Get your game on. You know, that's always going to be a good song that comes to mind, but it's what comes to mind is when you, if you watch Shrek, Remember the scene where all the little fairy tale uh, creatures are uh, kind of kicked out of the kingdom and they all come and they dropped into Shrek's swamp. So they take over his house. And so during that moment, before all the chaos happened, you see Shrek lighting his candles, eating gooky mook, whatever he was fixing. But it just looked really cool. And I think that this would actually make me smile, be something that I would kind of check out. So if you guys are interested in this, let me know. I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Now let's get to this kind of creepy story that we were telling you guys about earlier with this big snake that you see here on the screen. It's kind of gross, but it also would make me quit my job that day as a mechanic. So let's get into this, okay? So a car dealership employee in South Carolina made a surprising discovery under the hood of a car that was brought in for service this week. They found an eight-foot boa constrictor, y'all, wrapped around the car's engine. Boa constrictors are not common in the wild of South Carolina, which leads the snake chaser to believe that this was someone's pet a local vet says that the snake probably slithered into the engine after the car was turned off at one time to stay warm. Oh, my gosh. Can you just imagine what that experience would be like if you're sitting here trying to figure out what's wrong with this vehicle, you open it, and it's this big thing? Like, how... 
oh, God, how do you even respond to that? So Kareem actually comes in on my Facebook page and says, I'm fairly certain that the car wasn't driven with that snake wrapped around the engine. If the car was towed, the snake was already hanging around the mechanic shop. My rule is just stay out of Florida. <laughs> so he's just like, just avoid it at all costs. Uh, yeah, no, this is, this it, it's, it's just crazy. Again, this is in South Carolina that, where this happened, uh, I I absolutely, whew, that was just that would just really really take me to a very very scary place. Let's get Jazz in on this action. Jazz, what would you do if you were a mechanic and someone brought their car in and this is what you saw under the hood? I'll just walk out. Like that's the snake car now. <laughs> that's the snake car. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is cute. eight. Feet long. That's taller than our whole body. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're only like five foot eight, five like five feet. Ooh. That's like longer. Girl, <laughs> body. like that's too much, and it was big too. <laughs> hey, so no. was I'm not trying to get. Strangled or um, suffocated by a snake. <laughs> hey, no, wait, wait, no, you are 100% right. So uh, tell me, uh, I want to know your thoughts on would you stay in Shrek's uh, Airbnb? Oh, for sure, 100%. <laughs> I was a huge Shrek fan when I was little, and I just thought it was so funny. Like, and I still find the movies funny. So, like, I think that would be like, a good experience to have. Like, I think it's, it's hilarious that they even thought of that. Like, I would never think of something like that, but I think it's really funny. Yeah, no, it, it is very funny. I think it's really cool as well. I would definitely do it. And I, yes, I will light the earwax candles. Uh, <laughs> tell me, do we have any comments today? Yeah, um, let's see. Daryl Lindsay says somebody's missing a pet snake. <laughs> well, yeah. Woo, Lord. <laughs> and then um, Just Me said, nope, I don't do snakes. Yeah, no, I am with them as well. Yeah, no, I'm just looking. And you know, you already know, uh, Kareem always comes in with the facts. He just commented again because our script says that this was found in North Carolina, or excuse me, South Carolina. And then we got, uh, it's coming from Florida. Florida mechanics pulled this boa constrictor out. So regardless of where it came from, <laughs> it's a scary situation. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Never want that to happen. Because I'm like, I've heard of like kittens being in engines and stuff like that, but never a snake. Exactly. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm curious as to where it even came from. Mm, girl, well, hopefully it is returned back to its owner. Right. <laughs> All right, girl. Well, thank you so much, Jazz. All right, bye. Have a good day. Have a good one. All right, guys, before we roll out, let's get to these headlines of the day. Let's knock this out. So, coming up later in our news cast, we have more information about an officer involved shooting in Lynchburg. Police say that they were called to the area of Miller Park for reports of assault around 9 Wednesday morning. A 911 caller claimed a woman was chasing a man with a knife. Crazy situation there. Plus, a Bedford County man was sentenced to 50 years in prison after he attacked a realtor with a wrench during an open house. During his sentencing, Dustin Holdren told the court what happened that day. You'll hear his account coming up later. And lawmakers in the nation's capital have just over two days to agree on a deal to avoid a government shutdown. Funding for the government expires this coming Sunday, October 1st. And right now, there is no plan in place to prevent that those stories and so much more. Also, guys, we already know, speaking of that shutdown, that was kind of one of the hot topics in the GOP debate that went down last night. It, it did get heated, but it was uh, a unified kind of uh, frustration, I think, because obviously President or former President Trump did not show up. So if you go back and look at that debate, and we're going to do a couple little uh, kind of a refresher in our later newscast as far as what all happened, the highlights of that debate, you'll see that it was, it was pretty intense. So that happened. Um, Either way, guys, before I roll out, I do want you guys to know that you I, I need you just to be in a more positive spirit, a positive mood. Um, and this is something just coming from my heart. Last night, I went to worship uh, at my church, at a greater love church. And it was amazing at how, you know, you just feel good after being able to talk it out. You know, and obviously we live in a world where there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of concern. A lot of things that will make you just, you know, get in such a dark space and kind of a depression. But the message of last night was just redirecting that energy to kind of looking at the blessings that you do have in life and the positives that you do have in life. And know that the better you are doing, the more 
the enemy is going to come in and try to make that not appear that way, you know. And for me, you know, personally speaking, as a believer, for other believers out there, you already know, it's best to be Christ connected, you know. So uh, I just had to say that because, again, it just, I, I felt great <laughs> after last night. And I felt like this is something that other people who are going through some type of stressful situation or some type of uh, deal that has them in a dark head space to know that it's going to be okay, you know. It's going to be okay. We just got to look at the positives, take things one day day at a time and just find ways to be connected to the positives in your life. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday. Of course, we'll see you guys back here again. The morning sprint kicking off. I will be out tomorrow. We'll try to see if we get somebody to fill the show up tomorrow. But if not, I'll see you guys on Monday, 8 a.m. on WSLS.com.